Boss Nod Basics. That too much? Probably too much. Can I calm it down a bit maybe? Welcome to Boss Nod Basics. My name is Ryan and I'm going to guide you through some of the basics of the Boss Nod. Nah. Right, what we're doing with the day? Shock bolts. We're going to take them out, we're going to clean them, we're going to grease them and put them back in at the proper torque. I'm going to show you how. Here are the things you're going to need. You're going to need from left, you've got a torque wrench uh, so you can get the right torques. If you don't, I'm going to show you a way how to get around that. Um, we've got a socket set there which has a 5mm um, bit. We have a secondary 5mm Allen key because it is a through bolt, we have to hold both sides. Um, we've got a little bit of paper towel just for cleaning the, the dirt off, the excess, cleaning everything up afterwards as well. Um, a tub of grease, it's just lithium grease, nothing special. And I use these industrial hand wipes. Um, they're designed for cleaning your hands, but they do have um, alcohol base in them. So they're very good as a degreasant for just parts anyway. Starting um, with the front bolt, what we do get a correct fitting bit which is a five millimeter bit um, and for those that don't have a torque wrench i'm going to show you that if you get to a position so at the moment the arm if you like off the ratchet is level so all i'm going to do is i'm going to loosen it off and without taking off i'm going to reverse it again so i can tighten it back up and i can get a feel for what 12 newton meters feels like by pulling up on the end so just remember roughly what that feels like and that'll make it easier for you later on so all we're going to do is loosen this bolt all the way off and now do this quite a lot so it's pretty easy for it all to come apart got a little five millimeter allen key there and you'll see that this comes all the way off and it is on this side it's just a bolt But on the other side, it's a, it's a shaft with a, an Allen key head on it as well. So I'm just going to put that back in for a sec. Um, to make life easy for removing the bolts, I'm going to take the back wheel off. Now, you notice the chain's missing from this one. I'm in the middle of stripping down and rebuilding, but I thought I'd show you as we're doing it. So just quick release. And then, depending on what mech hanger you've got, some of them have got a latch so you can get them out of the way. But just pull it out of the way, remove the wheel, and then that takes the weight off of the back triangle um, so it makes it easier to maneuver those bolts in and out um, so there's a reason i put the the screw bolt back in its place is because what you'll find is if you push it's a very tight fit and you might not be able to push it all the way through depending on how much maintenance how much grease if it's a hot day cold day you're just not going to push that through so what to do is you leave that in place put a bolt on the other side and when you Turn it, put pressure on your thumb as you're turning and you'll find that it starts to move and then drop out the back. So it just keeps it dead easy to get it out. Um, and just unscrew the whole assembly. It might still have a wee bit of resistance. Um, and there we go there. So the two parts. Take that bolt out of there. Yeah, man. And now we have um, across here, you can see it's kind of greasy already because I do this quite a lot. Um, but the assembly itself is like so. So it's a bolt that goes in for this side, and we've got an Allen key head on the other side. So that's all it is just a machined shaft that pivots onto the top end of that shock. So we're going to take this out, we're going to give it a clean, re grease it, and then reinstall. Now you don't need to take the shock actually out of the frame, you could do one bolt at a time. Um, but what I'm going to do so that it's dead easy and dead clear and you can see what's going on is I'm going to remove it completely. Um, but just for simplicity, just do one bolt, take it out, clean it, put it back in and then do the same for the back end and then that way you know which bolt went where. So again, we're just taking the back end out again, correctly fitting tool bit so we don't round anything. And it's going to be the same trick, so I'm going to back it out as far as it can go and then i'm gonna start with the back end just to free it off if it's uh, not coming free at all this one um 
is actually very free, as you can see. So I might indicate there's some play bit. I have just greased this um, the other day, so that's the main reason why this is nice and free. All of that is there's no pressure on the back end as well because the tire's been removed and uh, the front bolt has been removed as well, so there's no pressure um, and the whole thing can move freely anyway. So I'm going to take this off, put on the nice bright pink bench and then uh, we're going to have a look and see what we need to do. I uh, just want to add this a little bit. Um, if we're taking it out, We've got to watch so you can see that there's a, a washer behind here and there's a washer on the other side. But also inboard, we've got um, spacer washers, if you like, that are on top of the bush shaft. So we'll see it all when it comes apart, but just be aware is when you take it out, is none of this drops. Um, and then that way you're not putting it back together, wondering why you've got a wee bit of play here and there. So I'll show the entire assembly once we get it out. So there's shaft and a bolt. I'm just going to put this bit down here and then we're going to pull out up the way and just for the time being I'm going to put the shaft back in, bolt back in and then I'm not going to lose anything as I move it over to the bench. So here's the shock assembly away from the bike just uh, so you can see it clearer. Um, you can see the, the through bolts at uh, the bottom end and the top end up here. Um, we're going to take them out, we're going to clean them. Um, now how you clean them is up to yourself but usually alcohol or degreasant, something like that is good. I use um, these alcohol wipes uh, for hand cleaners, like industrial type stuff you get from automotive factors, you know, Halfords, all that sort of thing. Any of your local hardware stores usually have them, maybe even screw fix. So I'm going to take the bolts out, lay them out, and then we're going to clean them. So this is what the stripped down top assembly looks like. Um, we've got from left to right, it's just a five millimeter headed bolt washer that butts up to the shoulder of the bolt. We've got this spacer washer which goes onto the bush of uh, the top end of that shock. Now that is set for the boss nut frame. If you buy an aftermarket shock you might need to press that out. Uh, there are tools to do it and there's other ways around it. And then as we move along we've got another spacer on that side, another washer and then we've got the shaft on that side. So I'm going to just uh, grab the wipe and take all the individual parts. Now, the thread itself doesn't need uh, to be that clean, but you may as well do it while you're at it. So clean, head of the bolt, but most importantly is the shoulder, the inside part, because that's what's going to butt up against the washer. That's what's getting tightened up. And we're going to put some grease there as well, because that can be a cause of some of the creaks between the bolt and the washer. So I'll chuck that down there. Again, the washer itself, dead easy, just give it a rub comes up nice and shiny. Um, these bushes, um, or the, the spacer for the bushes, it's good to get these cleaned and greased as well because any part that's separate you want grease in between it all, the entire assembly. So put your finger through, inside is important, and both surfaces as well. Um, Again, we're going to sit and clean, I'll not do that now, um, but just rub around the whole area, make sure everywhere that the grease is going to go is going to be nice and clean. Um, if you have any dirt in with the grease, um, it just turns it into a grinding paste, so it's not going to do any benefit and actually make it worse. And then again, all the way through, when we come to um, the shaft piece, again, the inside doesn't really matter for the thread, because um, that's going to get bolted up and usually there's a bit of thread lock on it. Um, so just give it all a clean around and the shoulders again as well because that's butted up against the washer as I said for the bolt And then that does that and then the grease um, The one I'm using it's just a, a lithium based grease made by the SAS so it must be tough stuff But yeah, it's just general purpose grease it doesn't have to be anything special um, And just give the whole thing a, a nice good coating so we've got a grease tub here, so I tend to wear a rubber glove on one side and not on the other so I can handle it. So hands that's uh, rubber gloved up is going to deal with the grease. So I just put a little bit on it and with the glove just make sure the entire shaft gets covered and the shoulder of the bolt head as well. So just like that, nice cover in. You can't put too much on basically, it will squeeze out any excess and we'll clean it up at the end. 
Um, so you do this with all the components there, so washers, the lot. So we're just going to do that and then rattle it all back in. So a few little pointers as we go, um, just in case disaster strikes and you drop the bolts and you can't remember which one's which. Um, the top bolt that goes up beside the rebound adjuster on the regular Monarch, um, so it's towards the front of the bike, that is the shorter shaft of the two. So you see that the, the bottom shaft or the lower shaft is longer. Um, you'll pretty much figure that out when you go to put it together anyway, um, but it's worth pointing out. Um, the other thing that you might struggle with, depending on how often you have taken the assembly part is these uh, spacers as well they might not come out nice and cleanly so if you get like a really fine flat headed screwdriver or something like that and just push it in between the groove you can just lever it up so if I just zoom in there so you're just putting it in and twisting and you can see how it's just lifting off and once it gets going and you work your way around then it will pop clear um, and then again, clean grease, off you go again. So again, we're thinking um, any time we're cleaning, the whole thing is to get every surface that's going to be in contact with the bolt and the shaft clean. So I'm going to use just a little bit of this uh, hand wipe. I'm going to get a screwdriver and we're just going to poke it through the gap. And then just pull it through and you know that internally it's going to be all nice and clean. Now we're going to do that to the frame also. So all this hard work is going to be in vain if we clean absolutely everything but forget about the frame as well. So um, we've got all the way around this edge, got to get that clean and also through the shaft as well. So again, hand wipe, just pushing it through the gap and then pulling it through. <laughs> all in one direction and it should pick up any dirt that's within the shaft as you can see nice and shiny now compared to the back one um, so just repeat the steps um, the other thing you can do I like to use a, a fine flat headed screwdriver and you can just with a cloth on the end you can push it round the grooves and as you can see it comes up nice and shiny straight away so make sure you get the the flat surface that the washer is going to go on obviously the, the pivot bolt itself and the shaft is going to rest on the inside of that and um, also the inside surfaces as well so as you can see just here at the back um, same idea so make sure they're all clean as well because all of this has got to get tightened if anything's dry or there's dirt in there that's where your creaking is going to come from so we've now got our collection of clean parts up here Everything's been degreased down, so we need to grease everything and assemble it back onto the shock. So we're just going to do that right now, so I can show you everything. Now I'm going to assemble it as it is here, so that when I move over, um, everything's in the correct order. So pay attention to uh, any spacer washers that have been put in there. So basically any washers that have been used to pack out. On mine, the back has actually two spacer washers instead of just the one which is on the front. Um, that's obviously just take up any play that's extra length in the shaft itself um, so when you're taking a part just pay attention to what washers come from where lay them out in a nice logical order if you wish and um, try not to drop them on the ground so I'm gonna start with the shock and we've got ourselves the spacer uh, washers for the bush so on my hand I'm just taking a little bit of grease it makes it easy to pick them up I've got to rub the entire surface so the inside, the back and the front sides going. With the excess grease I'm going to be putting that around the outside, making sure the surface is getting it and um, also just a little bit so that when uh, we push the shaft through it should grease the entire assembly as it goes in. So I'll do that and now with the grease you'll find that this stuff actually sticks and holds place and you can see the excess squeezes out so we just turn ourselves to the back end and we're going to do it the exact same on this side so a little bit of grease around there grease the washer both sides and on the inside and then push in nice bit of excess and we're going to clean that off before it goes into the frame and then that way um, it's not going to attract dirt or anything like that um, we've got ourselves, um, we're building the top end so it's going to be the smaller of two bolts 
So here we are here. So it's going to be going on there. And I've already um, put the washer on the frame. So this is going to go like so. As it pushes out all the excess. Push all the way through. Put a bit of grease around. And work it back and forward. And make sure you've got no dry patches if you like. So you don't feel any grind. It should be nice and smooth going back there. No binding points. Okay. And then all we've got left to do is there's a washer that's going to go on this side of the shaft. Which will go in there. We've got a larger washer, a larger thicker washer that goes on the bolt side. So that's going to go on to the end there with the, the bolt just to show you. So that surface is going to be rubbing on the inside of the frame. And then we have the bolt itself, and we're going to make sure that the bolt um, inside shoulder to the head of that is going to have a bit of grease as well, because again, it's a contact point, point where you can get a bit of creaking coming in. So that's the assembly there, bolt washer goes on, and then that's going to go on the outside there. I'm just going to put it on by a turn, and then I know that assembly is there, see the amount of grease that's on there, can't go wrong. And then we're just going to do the exact same for the bottom end. So same idea for the bottom end. I'm just going to zoom in there so you can see it a little bit better. So again, we're going to be greasing just like we did before. I'm not going to repeat it. Um, but the bush washer makes sure that the surface there, the shaft itself, the top surface inside, and then every washer. So as you stack them, make sure everything's covered in grease. And once we're done, we're going to wipe the, the excess off and then get it onto the frame. Uh, so now we've got our assembly all together, I've put the bolts onto the end of the shaft just to hold it all together and then all I'm going to do is with the shop cloth here or rag or whatever you've got I'm just going to wipe off the excess um, which is across the, the top here because um, we don't, obviously that's going to be exposed, it's just going to collect dirt so we want to make sure it's clean and we've got easier access to it right now before it goes into the frame. So just cleaning off the wee bits of excess, leaving as much grease in place as you can. Okay so we're back to the frame, I've taken the bolt just out the side and we're going to put the top in first so I just need to shove that through, take out the back end and we're going to position the shock in so it might take a wee bit of push to get it into position where you want it to be and then we're going to work in from the back end getting that shaft all the way through and it takes a wee bit of wiggling but once you've got it and it goes all the way through bolt on the other side and I've just got to grab an allen key because everything's nice and greasy now and I'm just rotating backwards if you like and I'm trying to find where the thread is so as I'm rotating backwards I'll feel the thread drop and when I know it's dropped I know that I'm not going to cross thread it's just a case of tightening now I'm just going to hand tighten for the moment we're going to come back with the torque wrench if, um, if uh, the torque wrench obviously we need to get to the right amount we'll see that in a second so what we're going to do is we're going to get the aisle lined up with the back assembly. Now the wheel's off the back so it means that there's no resistance. I can lift this rear triangle up and down, wiggle it about until we get this back bolt here through, or the back shaft. And then again, I'll take our little bolt, and that is just going to locate into the end of the pivot shaft. There it is going in nicely now. You can put your finger at the back of the shaft as well. It should be enough resistance to hold it in place. Stop it rotating and just tighten it up by hand until you can feel it resisting. And at that point we're going to stop and we're going to use a torque wrench for the rest. So the last step in putting it all back together is I'm going to be using a torque wrench with a 5mm bit on the end, so again a good fitting one, and I'm going to use uh, this allen key here around the back. Now what I'm going to do is, in this case, 
the bolts on this side and the shaft comes in from the back end, the pivot shaft. So I'm going to use this side to tighten on. It's just a thing I do. I don't think it really matters which way around you do it. And we're just tightening on until we get a bit of resistance. And with any torque wrench, we're basically just looking for that quick. So turning. It's nicely greased up as well, so all the play will take up first. I'm starting to feel resistance now. And there it's 12 newton meters. And then we're just gonna do the exact same on the back. So Allen key located just so that I can hold it if it needs to and um, rotate. Because you've greased everything up, there might not be enough resistance, it might just spin. So we're just gonna again turn. at that point there so 12 new meters whole thing's assembled nice and tight at the right torque not too tight because that can cause you creaking not too loose because obviously it can come apart and now the last thing i'm going to do is with um this uh, rag with the alcohol wipes i'm going to go around and i'm taking out anywhere where there's excess grease because as we tightened up there will be grease popped out and pressed out of um, flat surfaces areas behind the bolts so we're just going around everywhere where we've been touching and everywhere where we had grease and just taking everything out because the dirt next time you hit the trail will just instantly glue to that and then start grinding away at anything so there is job done and creek free